Hey, it's Noel Christopher, Renner's Warehouse. Appreciate everybody who liked and commented and gave some thoughtful comments on my last video and about the journey and, and what I'm trying to do here in the SFR space and uh, rebuilding my pipeline, really. A lot of you know I'm really a geek about data and I like to talk a lot about the housing data and sometimes you can get really deep, in, deep into that. And there's a couple of people I follow both on data, on uh, being relevant on LinkedIn, a lot of different things. So I always like to share some of this stuff. First off, Mark Fleming, the chief economist for First American, put out a report just recently, and he was talking about household income data and affordability. And affordability has always been an issue. And with low income rate or low interest rates, affordability has been getting a little bit better, actually. That's with wage increases. A lot of information has been coming out and sifting through this data is really difficult. So they came out and said that income had increased, hourly wage income had increased by 8% in April. What that didn't account for and what it doesn't account for is the lack of uh, low-wage employees that have been laid off to be counted in this data. So when the low-wage employees are laid off, they don't count it in the data. So that actually pushed up the perceived wages in April, but it wasn't true. The house buying power is not as much as what a lot of places reported. So, you know, it really comes down to rates, income, and nominal house price to, that drives affordability. So we've got low rates. Income has been steadily improving in the last few years, but we're not quite sure what's going to happen with everything with COVID and the uncertainty going forward. And house prices. Well, house prices have been going up. That's just a fact. But let's look a little bit, a little bit deeper. So if the average income stayed the same, house prices stayed the same, in March to April, the affordability would have gone up about $8,000. But if house income, income, income goes down a, a percent, which is what some are predicting, with appreciation staying flat, affordability is still pretty strong because the rates are so low. But what we're seeing is about a 7.9% appreciation year over year from last year. So that appreciation pushes the affordability. And that's something that we need to watch and need to look at and see where the affordability is at. The other thing is inventory. Actually, I get this from Mike Del Prete. He does some great uh, data on the housing market and listings and things like this. And I'm going to tie all this into single family rentals here real quick, but the inventory is down 20 to 40% nationally. And it's pretty interesting. And that's really driving appreciation. We've got the same amount of buyers out there. In fact, we hit some record pending sales for May. And that's going to be interesting because a lot of people aren't going to be able to buy a house that want to. And this drives a lot of people to rentals. I have said this before, when we have people applying for our rentals, many of them are also dual tracking, applying for a house to live in, and they just can't find a house. And there's a lot of other factors that might drive people to uh, not wanting to, to buy a house as well sometimes. Uh, if they went through the last recession, they saw their parents lose everything, there's a little bit of apprehension around home ownership, and there's less of a stigma about renting a home. And I tell this to builders all the time, for every $300,000 less or less entry-level home for a home owner occupied buyer, there needs to be one for a renter. So this is driving that need for rentals and markets. You're seeing a lot of these funds and a lot of these builders go into these uh, tertiary markets that can be affordable. Appreciate your feedback. I'm gonna be doing these, week, these videos twice a week, plus posting some other data on uh, or some other posts on LinkedIn and really trying to drive that engagement, really trying to drive the business. I'm looking for uh, more builders and more product, and more inventory to sell to funds and really help build up the rental inventory that is lacking just like the homes to buy. So like, comment, share. Appreciate your thoughts.